Lord's House is a non-denominational church located just a few miles from Glasgow, Kentucky on the Edmonton Road. The Shepherd's House family invites you to Bible study on Sunday at 9 a.m., worship service at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday, and the Sunday evening service at 6 p.m. Midweek service at the Shepherd's House is Wednesday at 7 p.m. The Shepherd's House family cordially invites you to any of these services. Special thank you to all the folks that are joining us now by radio and by television. I hope this will be a blessing to you. And I've got some things in the Word of God that, uh, that I want to share with you today. And I appreciate all the ones here at the Shepherd's House. We've got, uh, I got a new one or two uh, coming in about every week. I know we've got some uh, that are out today. But uh, nevertheless, uh, we're beginning to grow. And I thank God for that. And our ministry is, and I was telling somebody earlier here at the church, uh, since the first of the year, our ministry has absolutely exploded. The Lord has blessed us, and we're reaching uh, thousands upon thousands of people now uh, every week. And uh, who would ever thought in a little place called Glasgow, Kentucky, that the Lord would lift up a hillbilly uh, preacher that is ignorant and as dumb as I am and allow me to reach the multitudes through the Word of God. But you know, the Lord takes the, the simple and the small, amen, and lifts them up sometimes because they're humble, amen. And the Lord, you know what the Lord wants? All He wants is a piece of clay, Amen. If we'll just be a piece of clay, he'll mold what he wants us to be, and it will be a good product when he gets done with us. Now, he's not going to get done with me till I die. He's going to work on me and going to work on you the rest of our lives. I thank God he don't ever quit working on us. And any time we think we've arrived, we've fooled ourselves. We've done stepped into vanity, amen, and we're deceiving ourselves, amen. You don't ever get all you can get. You can just get, to, you know, we can get equipped with more than what we used to have, but there's always a little more we can get from the Lord, amen. There's some things that he can teach us, and the most of the time, I hate to say this, the Lord has to allow us to go through brokenness before he can ever teach us. And I know I've heard different ones say, Lord, break me, and I'm looking at them thinking, are you really sure that this is what you want? And they say, Lord, break me so that you'll be able to use me. And I think, well, we're going to have to get broken before he can use us. But I'm going to tell you, there's a whole lot of pain sometimes that goes along with that, with that brokenness. Now, there's nothing that smells any better than a broken rose. It's got such an aroma that everybody, I don't see how anybody can not like the smell of a broken rose. But see, when that rose is broken, then it gets, then it's bruised also. And there's a lot. And the next thing you know, if you're not careful, that rose that's broken, that rose that's bruised, amen, will cease to exist. And John the Baptist said uh, that I must first dis decrease in order for him to increase. And if how many like to have a closer walk with the Lord? Then you're going to have to have a less walk with you. And I'm going to have to get away from me a little more in order to get closer to him. And it's sometimes it's hard to understand that. We have to give up some of our ways of thinking and our, our pride and our vein. And sometimes we have to surrender things like going and apologizing to somebody that you're not really sure that they really need an apology. Amen. The Lord has to work on us. And sometimes he tells us to forgive the most unforgiv unforgivable person, the person that's offended us worse than anybody that's ever offended us before. Sometimes the Lord will say, you need to forgive them. And we have to say, Lord, I can't. And then we have to say, and then he'll say, you've got to forgive them. And then we've got to pray. And the Lord get us into a place that we can forgive them so much that we can go to them and say, I love you. And hug them. Amen, and mean it when you do so, and then you're going to grow about that much in the Lord. Amen, when we get to that place, but sometimes it's hard because the devil's going to bring up all that ignorant, 
<laughs> arrogant, stupid things that they've done and the evil words that they've said that's hurt us, they're going to bring, he, he's going to bring that right up in front of us to keep us from doing the will of God. And what the Lord has to do sometimes, uh, amen, we have to become putty in his hands or clay in his hands. And sometimes uh, being broken and being crushed is not a bad thing, even though I don't say, Lord, crush me. I say, Lord, strengthen me. I know the things that's going to crush me because you can't live in this life without being hurt, without being crushed, without being broken. It's just part of the world that we're in. The devil is loose, and he's going to use people to get to us. Amen. People to hurt us. And sometimes they don't even know when they're hurting us. And in and, and order to carry on for the Lord, we've got to let God change us. And this is and a different way than what I thought the message was going today, but I need to spend some time on this. Sometimes uh, we just have to get self out of the way and allow God to do the most simple, basic things uh, as changing us and molding us into being a more forgiving person. If we were better at forgiving people, amen, we wouldn't be so hard to get along with. We wouldn't be so depressed, amen, and discouraged, amen, as often as we are because I want to tell you something. You can't fix your brother. You can't fix your sister, amen. It's going to take Jesus to fix them. He's the one that breaks the chains. We were listening to the song a few minutes ago. He broke the chains, amen. Thank God he did break the chains, and there's not a chain that he's not able to break, but you can't break a chain. I couldn't break one of them little chains that you see hanging on to, hanging a porch swing up let alone one of them big log chains. Amen. I don't have the ability to do that. But the Lord can take any chain, no matter how big those links are, and he can snap that thing. Amen. And we have to allow him sometimes to change us before we ever lead our brother and our sister to Christ. Because uh, don't look at, just look up at the ceiling for a minute because sometimes we could be the one that's hindering them. Amen. And when, you know what? Everybody loves a forgiving person. Everybody loves somebody, amen, that's forgiving, amen. And if you want to be loved, be a forgiving person. I don't know who I'm, who that's going out to today because uh, anyway, but nevertheless, it's going out to somebody. I can't be preached to, uh, to millions of homes uh, without that going out to somebody. And, and, and I know that if you're here at the shepherd's house, you're going to think, man, you're preaching right straight to me. Well, it may be, but there's probably 100,000 others that are saying the same thing because the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. We can't just pick it out and say, Lord, you just chop up all them hypocrites and just grind them into powder. What's going to happen is he's going to cut us up good first. <laughs> Amen. He's going to change us. Amen. But aren't you glad that he's a forgiving Jesus? Now, what I'm going to be preaching about today is finding mercy at the feet of Jesus. Finding mercy at the feet of Jesus. If it wasn't for His grace, they would none of us make it to heaven. If it wasn't for His grace, there would be none of us, amen, in church today after that we got saved, amen, because a lot of us has made some stupid mistakes and made some selfish choices. Uh-huh, we have. You can go ahead and agree with me, or you can disagree, but you still have. We all have. At one time or another, made some bad choices, hadn't we? And the Lord had to spank us withhold his spirit, withhold his blessings, amen, for a few days, amen, until we got our head, amen, in the right place. And the most time it takes us going to an altar of prayer and saying, Lord, what is it that I've done wrong? And a lot of times the Holy Spirit will tell us what we've done wrong and we don't want to listen. But I'm going to be showing you some people here in the Word of God. One, that it made many mistakes and found grace at the feet of Jesus. Now I'm going to be showing you about somebody that was having a really, really hard time and nobody could help them except the Lord. And I'm going to be preaching to somebody today, uh, either by television or radio or here at your shepherd's house. Uh, you've got an issue in your life that nobody else can fix. Uh, you may have prayed. Uh, you may have talked to preachers. Uh, you may have stood in prayer lines. Uh, you may have put your faith and trust uh, in buying books uh, and you just can't find the answer anywhere. But I want you to know you'll find the answer if you'll really seek Jesus uh, the way that you really need to seek him uh, and you may just have to get away from everybody and shut the door in your bedroom uh, turn the telephone off uh, and the radio and the computer and just cry out to God and he shows you amen something that you need to hear from heaven 
Amen. And sometimes it can be something, amen, that's in our way, that's holding the blessings of God back. Maybe you're not paying your tithes, or maybe God told you to give, or forgive somebody, or go to somebody and witness, and tell them of the goodness of the Lord. And we refuse to do that. We hold back the blessings of God, and we can't understand sometimes why the Lord won't remove this weight that's on our shoulders uh, and this burden uh, that's in our heart and this heaviness uh, that we seem like we just can't get lifted uh, and we don't understand why we can't rejoice uh, in the things of God like that we used to. It's because you've got one person, amen, in your way and that's the one that you looked at in the mirror this morning. Amen. That was a giant right there you looked at in the mirror today and that's the one that's going to withhold uh, amen the blessings uh, and hinder us and we have to get to God uh, and we have to understand when we come to the Lord he's not going to reject us uh, and turn us away I don't know how many people that I've talked to over the years uh, that the devil had convinced them they've been too bad They've done too many things. They've been so wrong that God would never forgive them of their sins. I want you to know you can get forgiveness for anything except blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. That's what the Bible says. Even if you commit adultery, even if you commit adultery, I know some people think that's an unpardonable sin. Amen. But it's not. Amen. Thank God it's not because most of America would be in hell. And a lot of the church folks, thank God he's a merciful and a forgiving God. Now, I don't believe in committing adultery. I'm just saying I'm thankful that's not the unpardonable sin. And I'm going to spend a minute on here, here just a minute. There's a lot of people get this all mixed up. Do a little teaching right here. They think the uh, unpardonable sin is just never getting saved. No. The unpardonable sin, the word blaspheme means to speak out against. You would have to have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, get angry and mad at God, and get uh, real bitter, and then speak out uh, and deny the Spirit of God. That's what blaspheming means. If you blaspheme Jimmy Wilson, you tell everybody he's a fake and he's not real, and there's nothing to him. You've blasphemed him. To never be my friend, you've not blasphemed me. Amen. False teachings, misunderstandings, uh, amen, in the Word of God. Now, I said all that to say this. Uh, I had somebody call me. They're probably watching by television today, and I'm not going to call any name because there's more than one person had this problem. But a few years ago, uh, this person had failed the Lord. The Lord told them to go and witness to somebody, and they didn't go when they were supposed to. And the Lord spanked them over that. And thank God that he did because if the Lord don't spank us, the Word says that we're none of his, that we're bastards, right? And not the children of God. If he doesn't spank us, I'm glad that he spanked this person. Amen. I'm glad that he spanked me, even though I don't like spankings. Amen. But it's to help me, and it was to help them. And then the devil come in and said, you have, uh, probably has blasphemed against the Spirit of God, and you'll never make it to heaven. And I said, no, no, no. That's not so. I'm thankful that we can say, God, I'm sorry, and pray and mean it in our heart, and he will forgive us. Uh, amen. Because everybody has been disobedient to God at one time or another. And I'm going to preach to some of those that's been rejected uh, and kicked uh, and bruised and hurt and walked on and dropped and forgotten and the devil has tried to convince you that you don't have any hope. I want to expose the devil as being a liar and the father of it today and I want to take the word of God and show you the mercy and the grace of Jesus Christ and to help you to understand, amen, that whatever you've done, you can run to Jesus and you can find help this morning. Praise his name. Amen. All right. I just want to get started preaching before I get the scripture read, if I'm not careful. Luke chapter number 7. If you'd read along with me, please. Verse number 37. It says, And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus said it meet in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known 
who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. When they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will he love the most? And Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss. But this woman, since the time that I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. I'm going to do something a little different today. I'm going to speak on this for just a minute. This woman here, which was a sinner, and if you go back in some of the commentaries, some of them thought that she might be possibly a prostitute, and others thought that she might just been a Samaritan or someone else that was a sinner that was compared uh, compared uh, to as being a heathen at that particular time by the Jewish people. But nevertheless, she was a sinner and one that was looked down upon. And I want you to notice here that if she was a harlot, there's no doubt about her a prostitute, which is the same thing. There's no doubt about in society she had less respect than probably anybody else in the town. But guess who showed her mercy? Amen? Jesus did. And guess what she did? She didn't come, amen, and start some kind of ritual. She came to worship him. She came to thank him for his grace and mercy because she believed she was going to receive what she needed that day. And if she could just thank him for being the God that he is, just thank him for being as merciful as what he is, and just praise him because she knew that she was going to find release, uh, amen, in, of the Spirit that day into her life. And when the Lord saw her passion for him, her love for him, her being able, amen, to not only kneel, but she got behind him, the Word said, and she began to wash his feet, amen, with her tears. Uh, she didn't want to face him. She felt so humble and so small and so inadequate that she just crawled up behind him. I can just see her there in behind him and crying and washing his feet, reaching her head around his feet, amen, and the tears was dripping off, uh, the hot tears on his feet, and she was taking her hair, the long hair of her head, and she was drying his feet and worshiping him and thanking him because she was below the bottom, the most filthy and the most least respected that there was, uh, and Jesus loved her and forgave her, amen, and the others began to criticize her, like what right do you have? Who do you think you are? Why, well, that's just an old sinner person there. You don't need to bother the Lord. You don't need to trouble Jesus. Uh, I want you to know today, if you're a religious person, you're probably troubling Jesus. If you're a humble person uh, and you're broken before the Lord, you're not troubling him, uh, amen. He's welcoming you to come to him just like you are. Now, see, the gospel is more of a simple thing than a lot of people realize. You see, you don't have to be able to quote Scripture backwards, and you don't have to be raised in church and have Sunday school pens, have a jacket, amen, that tells your church's name on it, or have part of your doctrine put on the back of the shirt in order to make you to have favor with God. But to have favor with God is to be humble and to realize, Lord, I cannot do anything without you and believing when you come to him that I'm going to receive this thing. Now see this woman here, she wasn't thinking or debating on whether or not I'm going to be touched by God. She just went ahead before she got to him and prepared an alabaster box of ointment, amen, which would have been worth approximately a year's wages at that particular time, uh, and she brought that to anoint him uh, and to wash his feet with her tears uh, in humility, and it touched Jesus. It made the Pharisee mad, 
Look what she's doing. She's wasting this money. Why, you could take that money and do a whole lot of other things with it. Amen. I'm going to stop right here for just a minute and share a little thing with a lot of people that's got the right, the wrong attitude. I know there's a lot of churches today uh, right around us and around different places all across America. Amen. They spend all kinds of money to beautify the church. Amen. They try to get the best chandelier, the biggest piano. Amen. They try to get uh, the, the prettiest bathrooms. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm going to tell you, you can find the Lord and worship Him. Amen. Out in an old barn somewhere. Amen. With the sun picking through the rafters. Uh, amen. Or through the roof, rather. Amen. And the cows are bawling. Uh, amen. While you're singing, there's victory in Jesus. Uh, amen. You don't have to have a pretty church, even though I'm thankful that God's blessed us with a beautiful church. Uh, and I'm glad for all of you that has a beautiful church church but some people's vision never goes beyond the inside of that church building what we can do for one another how we can beautify the thing and brothers and sisters all around in other countries starving to death and have not heard amen the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and they won't give a nickel amen to help somebody get saved amen but face able to get I give a little money to buy a pew and put their name on it in their honor Oh, I probably blowed a tube or two there, but it, it'd be all right. Uh, amen. I'm not saying it's wrong, amen, to put your name on a pew if you want to donate that to the church. Uh, amen. But how many hungry babies, uh, amen, could we have fed somewhere in another country? Amen. Or how many people could we have clothed uh, in another country for the money that we spent, uh, amen, on a pew? And you don't need to get it too relaxing because you'll fall asleep. Amen, I thought a time or two we'd be better off to build us some pews out of sawmill lumber and leave the splinters in it. <laughs> I'm just saying that out of fun. I'm thankful for the good pew, good seat, excuse me, that we're <laughs> that we're able to sit upon. Uh, amen. But the Lord's wanting somebody, amen, that loves him. Uh, there's multitudes out there, amen, that are starved to death, uh, amen, to hear the good news of the gospel. And my burden today is to pastor the church, uh, be there for my people, uh, amen, to laugh with them, cry with them, hurt with them, uh, shout with them, uh, and be there to teach them and to minister to them. But my church uh, is not inside the four walls here of this building anymore, amen, but the Lord has gave us uh, the opportunity to go into hundreds of countries now and preach the gospel uh, and to reach people uh, that are hungry Ooh, for the gospel. Mm, can I go ahead and hit a lick on this? Might as well while I'm here. Amen. I may have not offended you yet, so <laughs> I need to go ahead and get started. <laughs> Amen. But there's a lot of people today, amen, that are so picky, uh, amen, and so touchy on everything. Yeah, man, man, you can't hardly pastor them. But you know what happens in another country? As they were sharing this in Sunday school this morning. You know what happens? Some of them walks as much as 30 miles. Amen, over a two-day period of time. Amen, in mud, halfway up to their knees. Uh, and the bees are stinging them. Uh, and the wasps are stinging them. Uh, amen, and fight snakes to get through the jungle to get to the place uh, where somebody's come uh, from that great land called America to tell about a man called Jesus uh, that died on the cross uh, that will have mercy on me and forgive me of my sins. Uh, I want to go hear about this man that loves me. I want to hear about this man that forgives sinners. Uh, Amen. That will love the whoremonger and the prostitute and the ones that's rejected by the world. I want to go hear about this man. Amen. Listen, folks, and us here in America. Amen. The music's too loud. Amen. Or the, or, or the fan's too cold. Or the air conditioner gets to me. Or the children gets on my nerves. Or I don't like the preacher because he spits. It got quiet in here then. They don't have my style of music. I don't like the way uh, that they do this. I don't like the way that they do that. Amen. You know what? They don't get any complaints from anybody. Amen. In Africa. Amen. Or, or Haiti. Or anywhere else. They're just glad somebody loves them enough to tell them a story about a Savior that died, resurrected three days later. Now he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And they've got the hope uh, and the promise that they would just believe in him. Uh, he will change your life uh, and give them eternal life in a place called heaven. Amen. When all of life is over, amen, and tell them the stories uh, in the Word of God about heaven, uh, how that eye has not seen, uh, ear is not heard, uh, amen, neither has it entered uh, into the heart of man what God has in store for those that love him. Uh, they're starved to death to hear the news of you, 
excuse me, here in America. Amen. We an we analyze everything, uh, look everything up one side and down the other, and we pour our religion on it. Amen. And try to justify ourselves. Amen. We're picky. Amen. I, you know what I like to do? I like to, like to reach the multitudes uh, that just wants to hear the truth. Uh, amen. And just got an attitude of seeing other people saved. Amen. That wants to put their money into something to touch other people's lives. Well, Brother Jimmy, we got people that are hungry right here in America. Uh-oh. Hang on. We may have some that's hungry right here in America, and I'm going to make multitudes mad, so hold on, catch your breath for a minute. But the most of the ones that's hungry here in America, amen, is because they've got an attitude and got sin in their life, amen, because the government, amen, feeds those, amen, that are legitimately has a need, amen, and more than they ever have. And we pay taxes in, uh, amen, to help them, uh, amen, and I thank God we've got that, amen, to help the needy. But inside the church, uh, amen, the church will always take care of those uh, inside the church first. Uh, I'm not real big uh, on helping people in America outside the four walls of this church uh, because President Obama's doing that. What I want to do is help those in other countries, uh, amen, that don't have Social Security, Kentucky Medicaid, uh, or Medicare, amen, or some kind of a program, uh, amen, or food stamps, uh, or something to help them. Uh, and I'm thankful we've got that for those in America, amen, that needs help. But just let me go ahead and make some more, man. If you live right, give your heart to God, amen, work by the sweat of your face, pay your tithes into the local church, you'll never draw a food stamp or be on a program. Amen. I know that'll probably get somebody's dander up, but you'll get over it. Take two aspirin, go to bed, and you'll feel better in the morning. Amen, but it's the truth. Is the truth. Amen. Listen, uh, the Bible says, David said, I was young, now I'm old. I've yet to see the righteous forsaken or his seed on food stamps. I mean, excuse me, his seed begging bread. Cha-ching. Amen. Amen. I was raised up poor. We could have got food stamps if Daddy would have got them. He didn't want them. And he might have had pride, but he said, I'll work and provide for my family. I ain't getting food stamps. I'd hear him in the kitchen at night saying, Lord, bless my children. Lord, teach me your word. Uh, help me, Lord, not to sin or do anything unpleasing to you. Lord, give me my daily bread. Uh, touch me. Bless my family. And I, I shake uh, and I get scared hearing Daddy pray because he was ringing the bells of heaven. Amen. And he worked hard. Uh, you could tell by looking at him. Uh, amen. Some of you that knew him uh, knew. Amen. He looked like somebody that worked himself to death. Uh, amen. But he believed the word of God. Uh, he didn't have any education, but he sure did have a prayer life. Uh, I can tell you that right now and he never did get any government programs of any kind ever in his entire life I know all the oxygens don't went out of the room probably and there's a whole lot of tubes amen probably popped on television and on the internet today amen but I believe the promises that we have in the word of God amen Jesus had promised us amen if you'll seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness all these other things amen shall be added unto you and that's in Matthew chapter number 60 uh, chapter number 6 excuse me I believe that is Listen, the Lord, uh, amen, wants to bless us and to help us. Uh, this woman came to him, uh, amen, with uh, uh, humbleness, uh, amen, and seeking mercy. Uh, amen, the reason the people today don't have anything much is because they don't ask not. Uh, they ask not. Asking you shall receive, seeking you shall find. And the Bible says, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Amen. Well, Brother Jimmy, I would knock if I didn't have to go to church and live right. Then you're not knocking. Well, I would ask if I knew I would get something. You don't ask, amen, because you think that you deserve it. You ask knowing, amen, that you've done what you're supposed to do first. One of the things that, that just irks me is this teaching where you just name it and claim it and just believe it and you're going to receive it. Honey, there's some things that has to come before that. <laughs> 
Number one, you've got to be born again by the Spirit of God. You've got to have the Spirit of the Lord living inside your life. You've got to make Jesus number one in your life. Amen. You can't serve all these other gods and have a form of religion and expect God to bless you. Amen. The Lord will take care of us. And if we will seek Him first and try to help our neighbor and our brother, amen, instead of trying to get rich ourselves, God will add these things unto us. And we'll have to stop every now and then and take an hour or two to count our blessings, uh, amen, because God will mount them up quicker, amen, that we can even count them if we'll not be, amen, looking, amen, to get ahead, uh, but looking to help our brother and our sister. This is why this has been so twisted around, uh, amen, prosperity preachers, uh, amen, teaching all you got to do is sow seed in this ministry and everything's going to be all right. You'll have to put your money in two different banks. No scripture to back that up. That's not what Jesus told us to do. He told us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and these things shall be added to us. You mean I don't have to pray for food? Now you're getting it. Amen. I don't have to pray for food. I don't have to pray for clothes. I got other things to pray for. There's no need of me praying for food or clothing. All I got to do is work for it. If I'm not able to work, he'll either heal me or I'll be justified to be put on uh, public service. And, and, and that's all right because there's people that are sick and can't work. I understand that. Thank God that they've, they've got the programs to help them. But what I'm trying to say is God's going to make a way for us if we'll put our faith and our trust in him. Amen. And I don't have to ask for him to feed me. He's done promised me. All i got to do is seek him with all my heart and these will be added. That means they're going to be given to me if I seek First, the kingdom of God. Amen. And understand the principle of abiding in the vine, uh, not coming and meeting Jesus uh, and going back and living for the devil. And just let me go ahead and say this. If you really, 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 really got saved, amen, you may fall, but you'll get right back up. You won't be in church, out of church, and cuss one week and drink the next and shout the next. Amen. Amen. You don't have to go back to the altar and rededicate yourself four times a week. That's not going to be very popular because I made a bunch of my people mad over that a few years ago. Amen. They was going to the altar and trying to re rededicate three times a week. I said, what's wrong with you people? Something wrong didn't get a hold of something somewhere. Amen. I'm not saying you can't fail the Lord and you might have to rededicate, but three times a week? Now, come on. Let's get real here. Amen. There's something missing somewhere. Amen. And if I didn't have enough to keep me in church, I'd go back to the altar and get the real thing. I'm going to go ahead and hit. I didn't mean to get into this. Amen. All the years I've been in church, I ain't never had to have the preacher come and hold my hand, invite me back to church, and tell me how good I was, and the church is going to fall down if I didn't come back, and we ain't going to make it without you, and you're the best thing i ever seen to pat me on the back and hug me. Amen. The only time the pastor ever done anything for me was correct me right in front of everybody. Amen. Well, Brother Jimmy, looks like you'd have got hurt and left. If I didn't have anything, I would have. But the Lord told me to go back because I got you there. I didn't put you there for you to get your feelings out and run off somewhere else or to argue and fight with the preacher. I sent you there to shut up and listen. I got something to tell you. You haven't arrived yet. That really hurt me because I'd not been in church three months. Them preached five or six times. I hope this gets into somebody's heart that's watching me. Some of you that went out and started your church somewhere hadn't sat under it. Can I just, I didn't mean to get into this, but the Lord, you know what? Here in America, we got people starting new churches every week. Amen? And they don't want to sit under anybody. They don't want to be under a bishop. They want to do everything their way. Amen. I've got people in Kenya and had one this week that's wanting to join our church and, 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 and me be the bishop, their bishop, uh, amen, and teach them, uh, amen, and minister to them. And he wants to be a son under me. In fact, he's done calling me, the pastor is, calling me dad in the Lord. Amen. Because they want instruction. They want wisdom. Uh, somebody to hold them accountable and to teach them uh, and to encourage them and to help them. But we got an attitude here in America. Praise God, I'll go out and start me one. Ain't nobody telling me what to do. I've done preached ten times. Uh, what's wrong with that preacher? Who's he think he is? I'll take my six months of experience and go start me one. 
And that's where we're at today. But see, in other countries, uh, amen, where they don't have all these public assistance uh, and they don't have everything given to them and where they're not petted and peppered, uh, amen, they understand, uh, amen, they need to be under somebody and they need somebody to help them uh, in a hard time, uh, amen, through difficulties, uh, amen, and everything gets warped and out of perspective, uh, amen, because we don't understand who Jesus is and understand we're going to find grace, uh, we're going to find mercy, we're going to find help in a time of need, but we got to come to him, uh, amen, we just can't sit back uh, on our hand and lean back on on our thumb, uh, amen, and believe that the Lord uh, is just going to bring everything together and dump it in our lap and we can continue in our sins uh, and continue in our arrogance. Uh, well, how this message has changed, uh, amen, and can continue in our own ideas. Amen. I've heard different ones say, Brother Jimmy, I don't know why the Lord has sent me here. Amen. I don't know why the Lord sent me here either. And if you ever feel like leaving, you won't feel like leaving no more than what I have. Amen. Because sometimes I don't even like me. Amen. But what I'm trying, but what I'm trying to say is, uh, Amen. You have to keep on going, uh, and the word uh, is going to get under our skin, uh, Amen. Sometimes, and it's sure going to go against our teachings as a child and how we grew up. Amen. <laughs> There's others here can identify to that. I tell you, I told somebody many times I've eaten crow. And I'm still spitting feathers years later, amen, over some things, uh, amen, that I used to argue and fight with people over that wasn't in the Bible, and the Lord had to show me where it was. I thought, oh, no. The Lord, this don't make sense because this over here. And the Lord had to get a hold of me and let me understand. I had to take the whole Word of God, not just pick out a Scripture somewhere and hold on to it because I liked it. Hmm. Mark number 10. Verse number, verse number 46. I know I'm different, but you like me or you wouldn't be here. Mark number 10, verse number 46. And they came to Jericho, and as they went out of Jericho with his disciples uh, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the wayside begging. And when he had heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but cried the more a great deal. The son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Wilt thou that I should do unto him? Excuse me, what wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Now, see, blind Bartimaeus here, he was begging, uh, amen, and, and when he heard that Jesus was there, he cried out and began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And, and, and he just, began, just kept on crying it out uh, to the Lord, Lord, hear me, I've got a need. Uh, and the Lord heard him, and he met the need that he had. You know what the Lord wants to do? He wants to meet the need that we have. Uh, but we have to first cry out to him uh, and have the determination and the faith as the woman did, amen, that was a sinner that came to him asking, or not asking, but to worship him, and the Lord knew who she was. He knew what she had done. Now, everybody needs to understand this. Jesus knows everything that you've done from the time you were born until today. Every thought you've had, every attitude that we've had, every word that we said, he knows every bit of it. Now, if you go back to the woman, Samaritan woman at the well, you'll see there where Jesus, uh, I told her, said, woman, where's your husband? She said, Lord, I don't have none. He said, what you said is true. You don't have one, and, and you've had five husbands, and the one you've got now is not your own. Now, I'm going to put that down here in Kentucky language. You've been married five times, and now you're shacking up with somebody. Amen. He knew already where she was at. And he told her, if you knew who it was that was asking you of some of this water out of Jacob's well, you could ask him of water. And he said, I'll give you the living water that will flow out of your belly and spring up into everlasting life. In other words, I'll give you something that's good on this side and hope for a place in heaven when all of life is over. In other words, I'll ring your bell. Amen. He said, you'll 
uh, drink this water and Jacob's well and you'll thirst again. But when you drink the water that I have, uh, you'll never thirst. And I know there's many people that's got hung on that scripture, had a hard time understanding it. Uh, and it kind of bothered me a little bit when I first uh, started reading the word after I first got saved 33 years ago. But I want to tell you what I've come to the understanding there of knowing uh, is simply this. Uh, after you taste of the living water, you'll know that drugs, uh, alcohol, pornography, or anything else will never give you the comfort uh, and the peace. Uh, amen. That you'll never long for that kind of stuff anymore because now you found the real water and you're serving the pearl of the great price. Uh, amen. And you know, amen, who that you serve uh, and you fall in love with him. Uh, amen. And there's nobody going to separate you between the Lord. Amen. Now I'm going to say this. There's some says, well, I hope to come to church next Sunday. It's going to take a big man with a bigger fist than I got and somebody to help him keep me from coming. I'm not going to tell you I'm going to try to be here. I'm going to tell you if I ain't dead, if they don't even bomb me, I plan on being here. Amen. And it's going to take two of you to keep me out, and you're going to have a black eye when I get done with you too because I'm going to church. Other says, well, I'll try to make it. No, you won't. Everybody that's told me they're going to try to make it, they'll come. There's many that lied to me because they know in the first place there's a good chance that I ain't going to make it. And I don't know how many people says, well, you know my mom's sick. You can't go before church or after church. And see, Mom, amen. Some says, well, I'd like to live for the Lord, but I don't know where I can live it or not. Well, I'm going to give you a hint. You can't live it without Him. It's impossible. Amen. You've got to have Him, uh, amen, to help you. You don't have the strength within yourself. If you could live a righteous life by yourself, you could have saved yourself. That's why Jesus had to come and, and give His life on the cross is because we're weak and unable to save or deliver ourselves. We don't have the ability to do that. Amen. There's no one righteous, no, not one. Only Jesus. And can I say this about Jesus? Amen. Jesus said, that there's none good but the Father. They called him good. And Jesus said there's none good but the Father. That's what he was trying to say. And Jesus was perfect. They couldn't find a sin or a flaw in him anywhere. But he looked at himself like there's nobody good except the Father. That was excluding himself. So he was saying the Father is the only real good thing in this universe. Only him is good. And this was somebody that was perfect making that statement. Now where does that leave us? Amen. Leaves us way on down the road, don't it? Amen. At the bottom of the totem pole. Uh, amen. You know what's the bottom of the totem pole? Usually mud, and manure, and termites. <laughs> I could preach on that a while. Amen. I'm thankful today, amen, that the Lord uh, has the ability to pick us up from the bottom uh, and he will cause us uh, to live a righteous life. Uh, amen. He will cause us to live a righteous life. We don't have the ability. You know what you would do if your flesh, uh, amen, was raining over you? You do the same thing you've done before you got saved. Uh, you'll sin and live like a devil and try to justify it. Amen. But when you become uh, a new creature in Christ Jesus, uh, amen, your heart is to please the Lord. Your desire is to live a righteous life uh, and to win others to Christ uh, and to help change the world uh, and the community. Uh, amen. We have to start out with humility, but we must believe uh, that he's going to do something for us before we ever go to him. This woman, amen, that came uh, to worship Jesus, this sinner, possibly a prostitute, she come in behind Jesus. Uh, she was humble, but she knew she was not going to get rejected. She just wanted to come say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do you know what church is all about? Coming and saying, thank you, Lord. It's coming once a week, twice a week, three times a week, however many times your church has services. It's to come to sing unto the Lord and to pray. Lift up holy hands as the Word teaches us. Amen. Give him honor and glory and worship him and let him know, Lord, I'm thankful for the cross. I don't know about anybody else, but I am. Oh, Jimmy here, he's thankful for the blood that was shed on the cross because I'd be in hell if it wasn't for you. Lord, I'm thankful for your word, and I want to hear your word over and over and over again and again and again and again because what was good yesterday will be even better tomorrow. Amen. And it may be better than that next week when the devil attacks my home or attacks my work or attacks something or one of my family members or church members. Lord, your word will even be greater then. I'm going to come and I'm going to worship you. Amen. 
Now, everybody didn't go and fall at the feet of Jesus and worship him because some were thankful and some wasn't so thankful. Some followed Jesus only for the fish <laughs> and the miracles. Amen. I heard there's somebody over there raised that little, that, that little 12-year-old girl from the dead. Well, let's go check on him. There's people today that would do that. If you hear you have a Holy Spirit blow out here to church, there'd be somebody drive over to check it out. Amen. If you just heard we're going to have the word and have songs of Thanksgiving, they'd say, well, you know, uh, the Wizard of Oz is going to be on television this evening, and I ain't seen it in a long time and don't know for sure when it's going to be on again. And I just love to hear Dorothy sing the Yellow Brick Road. Well, Jimmy, there ain't nobody that fickle. You are nuts. I had a church member years ago. <laughs> we had a revival. He said, no, I won't be here tomorrow night, Brother Jimmy. I said, oh, you plan on being sick? Or what's, what's the reason? No, the Wizard of Oz is only on once a year. And I just love that. I said, you ain't never seen it before? Yeah, but it'll be, be another year before it's on. I won't be here tomorrow night. I said, it's better for me to keep my opinion to myself. People, people, people. I love people, but people get on my skin sometimes. I think, how ignorant. Amen. What's going to happen on the day of judgment? Lord, I love you, but I love Dorothy. I can tell you that right now. And I love the, sca uh, the scarecrow. And, I, and, and I'm telling you, that, that, that lion that didn't have no heart and the tin man. Oh, that's how carnal, carnal, excuse me. That a lot of the world is. Boy, what a message. I didn't mean it to. It sure has not been like I thought it was going to be. But we've got to be, we've got to be humble. We have to cry out to the Lord. And if we come to the Lord, uh, it don't matter how bad we've been, how wrong we've been, how much we've been rejected uh, by people uh, and by society. Amen. Jesus loves us. Uh, amen. He loves us enough that he will forgive us. Uh, we can find mercy. We can find grace. Uh, amen. We can find help uh, in a time of need. Uh, amen. We can find deliverance. Uh, amen. And we can be healed. Uh, amen. That anything thing is possible through the help of the Lord, but we cannot do anything by ourselves. Amen. <laughs> do a little more teaching here. Man, I'm like an eight-day clock. I'm wound up today. But some says, well, I'm sick, and I don't know about going up and be anointed with all and prayed for because I don't believe man could heal you. If I thought man could heal me, I'd stay at my seat too. Because I know that ain't going to work. So then, then, then what's the good for them to lay hands on him? Because the Bible says to. James 5, 14. See any suck, uh, sick among you? Let him call. For the elders of the church, right? Anointing them with all. Oh, I need to do a little teaching right here. It didn't say call for everybody it would. Let's come up and pray for them. I don't want them lost people coming up and praying for me. <laughs> he meant it said for the elders of the church. I got friends that just call, everybody wants to, let's come and pray for them. I don't want people packing spirits up here. I don't want that old boy and girl to shacking up, coming up there, laying hands on me and praying for me. I want the elder of the church to do it. I want somebody that's living right. I want somebody that's got a life, amen, that's, that's, that's connected with Jesus. I don't want to come up there uh, limping and pray for my leg and have somebody get a spirit off on me. And when I leave, I'm still limping. And now I want somebody else's wife because that spirit done jumped off on me. Oh, I didn't mean to get into all this today. Amen. But that's where we're at today. Amen. But it's see, it's see, it's the prayer and the faith that we have in Jesus Christ and the obedience. There's no power in the oil. There's no power in the preacher. The power comes through obedience to the Word of God, through faith and believing. And because we do as we're instructed, then the Lord can come through and heal us. I've been healed more than one time myself. I've seen other people, amen, that were healed. And I've seen many that hadn't been. Amen. But I'm just not one of those that just says, everybody just come on up here and let's pray for them. Uh -uh, you just stay at your seat. I'll call on who I want to come up here. I want the elders. I want the ordained to come. Amen. I know there's people lock horns with me on that, and I just switch them over to James 5, 14, and when they hush, then I know they've got it. Amen. 
if we do it like we're supposed to, amen, then everything's going to work out all right. If you've got a need this morning, I'm telling you, this message, I got started, and I go this way and that way, because it's all been, I've not been chasing rabbits, it's all been a message on the same thing, but I had to bring a lot of points in, and it's one of those that you need three hours to preach a 15-minute message. That's the way I feel today. But anyway, I'm, uh, the most of what, uh, what God's burdened me with, I'm done now, and it's time for you to react. You can either say, thank you, Lord, and tell everybody I enjoyed that on the way out, or you can come to the altar this morning and get what you need. We can come to the feet of Jesus, and we can say, Lord, I know you love me. I believe you love me, and I'm going to be a different person when I leave this place, and I'm not going to accept not receiving all the power that I need from heaven to get this stuff out of my body, out of my head, out of my life, out of my spirit, out of my soul. I want complete deliverance from the world and from sin. I want deliverance from everything that would edify itself against the knowledge of God out of my life and out of my, out of my way to where it doesn't bother me anymore. Can I go ahead and do a little teaching right here? For those of you that have been delivered from the things of God, for goodness sake, don't go back into bondage by going back home and allowing those things that God has delivered you from to put you back under bondage again. Amen? Get rid of whatever it is, amen, that's been offensive to you, that's been hindering you, that you've been delivered from. Get away from that stuff. Amen? Some people say, well, I come, and I got delivered from lust. Went right out the church doors and turned on the radio. Let's go honk it, talking, baby. You got them tight fitting jeans. I started loving you today. Amen. And I got delivered. And I let the world shove it right back into my ears, uh, right into my spirit, uh, right into my mind. I come back to church tonight. Lord, I need to be delivered. And I, no doubt the Lord's looking at you thinking, well, do you want it or not want it? You say, I don't want it, and you drink it, and then you say, I don't want it again. We're going to have to make your mind up. We have to abstain. Uh, that's what sanctification is, to abstain from those things uh, that God's delivered us from. Climb another step on the ladder. If alcohol was your problem, get delivered from it. Uh, amen. And pour everything you got out. Uh, and tell every friend you got, don't you're not welcome if you have to bring alcohol to my house, and I won't be none of your parties anymore unless I know it's dry. Amen, that's what you have to tell them, amen, or you'll go right back into it again. That's the reason why people, and I tell you what, it wears the churches, it wears the pastors out, it wears the churches out, it wears the people out, amen, when they just come, get delivered, and go right back into the same thing again, and they bring this stuff upon them, selves, again, amen. We need to be delivered, and we can stay delivered when we give ourselves completely over to the Lord. Stand with me, please, if you would, we're going to get a song of invitation, if you've got a need, why, you're welcome. Love to have you come uh, around the altar and pray. Uh, we're not going to come to your seat. We're not going to beg you. not going to drag you to the altar. You just come this morning and cry out to the Lord. Bring your problems to Him. You need to talk to Jesus. All right, I hope you enjoyed the program uh, today. Hope that it was a blessing to you. Um, we are dependent on contributions from people like you that watches the program, that likes the program, to send money in to keep this on the air. Um, those that um, are led of the Lord to give, I'm going to tell you a, a couple of ways that you can send money in. The first way is you can send your check or money order uh, to Jimmy Wilson Ministries, Post Office Box 1346, Glasgow, Kentucky, and that's uh, 42142. Again, that's Jimmy Wilson Ministries, one Post Office Box 1346, Glasgow, G-L-A-S-G-O-W, Kentucky, 42142. Or you can log on to our church's website at www.theshepherdshouse.net and you can click on the donate button and it'll run it through PayPal, which is one of the most trusted services um, that, that we have in America. And uh, I think everything will be fine. And Or you can, uh, if you don't have internet, you can give us a call and we'll be, someone will be on the phone. And uh, we'll have the capability of running that, your debit card or credit card, uh, through uh, that way if we need to. And uh, here's some things that I wanted to share with you out of the Word of God. We need to take our, our tithes 
into the storehouse, which is our home church, and then your offerings can go to other ministries. And, and Luke chapter 6, verse 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Men shall give into your bosom, for with the same measure that you met, with all it shall be measured to you again. Malachi 3, verse 10 says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall destroy the fruits, he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. If you believe in this ministry, then uh, we're going to pray that you will help support this ministry. And I've had several that sent in um, one-time offerings, and that's good. We appreciate that. But in order uh, to really keep the ministry going, we really need to have a continuous um, uh, coming in of, of what we can get each month. And I appreciate the ones. We have a few that does give uh, the same thing and sometimes even extra than what they normally give each month, and that uh, helps carry the load so we're able to do what we're doing. Right now, we're on uh, TV in Scottsville, Kentucky, which goes into southern Kentucky and northern Tennessee areas. And then we're on in Chicago, MCTV, which goes into um, the Chicago, Illinois area, into Indiana, into Michigan, and Wisconsin. So uh, we praise the Lord in parts of those states. We praise the Lord for that. Now we're also on HLE Radio uh, that uh, is on uh, twice per week. And um, that goes out to several people there that way in fact it goes into 139 countries there so and then we've got our church's website we've got archives uh, there where we've got several of the sermons over the last few uh, several weeks that's posted there and you can view that and, and watch some of the sermons there at any time at your leisure so we're getting out the best we can as fast as we can trying to reach as many people as we can and uh, we need your support to help us reach those people you pray about it and be led of the Lord. I'm not a prosperity preacher. I'm not going to make you promises that you're going to get rich or your boyfriend or girlfriend is going to come back and make up with you. I'm not making you promises like that. But I will tell you, if you'll sow seed in this ministry, the Lord will bless you. And if you'll help me reach the multitudes, if we don't reach for one soul and keep them out of hell, it'll be worth every bit of the effort and all the money that we all could give. God bless you. Pray about giving. Be led of the Holy Spirit. Support your home church first. God bless you.